Now, many of you won't know this, but the beauty industry is not regulated. There is no must-have seals of approval or regular grading like food premises, unless you're in safe hands thanks to the NZ Association of Registered Beauty Therapists. We're joined by their president, Judy West, to tell us more. I can't believe it. What do you mean there are no mandatory regulations when you think, you know, some of the therapists are using machines? It's horrible, it is. Um, there is no government regulation at all. Um, there are some council regulations and it's hoped that one day all the councils will have a mandatory regulation of hygiene and we have our own health and hygiene regulations but the, the, and we have been working with councils to try and get you know a uniformity throughout the country so this is where the association opt in literally to help to, to set a standard for people in doing beauty therapy you're making me very happy because one of my worst case scenarios was I went to get some fake eyelashes and I opened my eyes too early and the glue burnt my eyes I mean you must have a couple of incidents with, oh, of like that we, we've just recently had the one which was a lot of advertising about Melody as you know with the girl that her eyes stuck together and had to cut the eyelashes off <laughs> you know these sort of things happen and please believe me we, we understand but if you're trained properly this doesn't happen to the same degree and this is the difficulty there's so many people coming that are out there that are not actually trained properly and so therefore these mishaps will happen like wax burning or you know IPL burning all of these things it goes back to what I heard you say a moment ago about education doesn't it really it's educating people to be to give them the opportunity to be better at what they do. I guess then that answers a little bit about why you are running this uh, Are You In Safe Hands campaign. Well, I, I started this about five years ago. As I, I'd been to the Gauguin Museum in, in Paris and I was always intrigued by you know, the hands holding the world. And I, I really believe that we're all here to sort of serve mankind and help one another. And I felt that the, the, the need was so desperate in this industry because we were getting a reputation which was really not warranted. We are not the bad, we weren't the baddies. We've got all these very professional, wonderful beauty therapists that are doing amazing work. And then somebody comes along and does something bad. We get classed with that whole thing. Yeah. And this has been the difficulty. So. The, part, the poster was put out to protect the public and educate them and also to protect and support the therapists that are actually registered with us and doing a fabulous job. And also so that the public have a choice. So when they go into a salon, they can see you know, the, um, the Safe Hands poster, they can see our little sticker that we put in the logo, in the yes. logo. Yep. and um, we have a magazine. So it's actually teaching the public to be aware of all these things and then they can make a sound judgment as to who they go to. Great, great. I'll be looking for that the next time I go. What about the therapists if they want to join your association? How do they do that um, and what's the protocol? Well, the, the thing is we have a very strict protocol, um, as you can imagine, and our therapists are either nationally trained by in institutions or um, and also internationally trained. So they send their credentials in and then it's put before the executive committee and, and, the, and the person who's doing that modality of uh, looking after that portfolio. And then they, they go through it all and they, they check out the hours and, and the, then it's passed and they become a member. And then once they become a member, that's the difficult part really because you have to follow our health and sa safety guidelines. You have to um, abide by the, the structure of the association and be professional. So that's where really the onus then becomes on you also. And finally, uh, just quickly, if I had a complaint, if something happened to me, who shall I talk to? How do I do that? Well, all you need to do is ring the association and we'll help you. We can really get, we can work around it. We have a complaints officer and we can sort it out. I just hope you don't, Mel. Yeah, or, or you can check your website as well. You can check the website, exactly. Cool. Well, you are looking absolutely fantastic, so I know you're doing something right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Thanks so much for coming in, Judy.